Part 2, Assessment of the Reproductive System. Establish a trusting relationship with the patient while gaining the patient health history. Assess health habits such as diet, exercise, and sleep patterns while obtaining history related to safe sex practice and the use of contraceptives. Remember, a poor diet can lead to obesity especially if their diet consists of a high fat diet. Ask questions that will answer if the patient binge diets or purges leading to anorexia. Poor nutrition and heavy menses can lead to anemia and vitamin deficiencies. Family history provides pertinent information related to age and health status, hereditary components, and genetic components that can provide early detection and possible prevention of certain reproductive alterations. On page 1580 of your Iggy book, you will find Gordon's Functional Health Patterns. This chart, 72-2, provides examples of questions to ask the patient when performing the genital reproductive history. These questions will assist the RN in leading to other key assessment questions such as, for females, dysmenorrhea, vaginal discharge, drugs or alternative therapies, obstetric history, contraceptives, breast self-examination, and STDs. And for males, the questions can answer anything in regards to testicular changes, testicular self-exam, urination problems, STDs, sexual function, and any possible or past hernias. On page 1580 of your Iggy book, chart 72-3 provides examples of questions the RN may ask the patient when assessing for reproductive health problems. The key components are pain, bleeding, discharge, and or masses. A few diagnostic assessments that may be used to confirm or negate a reproductive alteration are a pap test, DNA, HPV, lab work which are listed on page 1582 of your textbook, cultures, general x-rays, a CT, Histrosalpingogram, mammography, ultrasound, an MRI, an endoscopy, laparoscopy, hysteroscopy, cervical biopsy, endometrial biopsy, breast biopsy, and a prostate biopsy. Okay, let's expand a little on the diagnostic assessments. Um, pap smear uh, detects precancerous and cancerous cells in the cervix. The American Cancer Society suggests having a pap smear test done within three years of starting sexual activity. Uh, you may have it every two years if it's done with the liquid base test. And then women at the age of 70, if they've had a negative test for 10 years, then they can discontinue testing. Okay, the education that you want to provide is they should schedule their pap test between their menses. They should have no vaginal medication or use any deodorants. And they shouldn't have sex for at least 24 hours. 
testing DNA of HPV can be done at the same time as a pap test. Blood studies could include FSH, LH, and prolactin. You can do serological studies for exposure to syphilis, rubella, herpes simplex virus type 2, BDRL, and HIV. PSA will screen for prostate cancer. You want to educate the client not to ejaculate for at least 24 hours and draw before a digital exam. Test will be performed using wet mounts and cultures. Hysterosalpingogram is an x-ray of the cervix, uterus, and fallopian tubes after injection of contrast medium. You want to note the LMP. Mammography can detect 80 to 90 percent of all palpable cancers. It is not recommended until the age of 40. The ultrasonography is used to assess problems such as uterine fibroids, ovarian cysts, and pelvic masses. You have the MRI. Colposcopy is used for inspection of the cervical epithelium, vagina, and vulvar epithelium. You can locate the exact site of precancerous and malignant lesions. Biopsy may be done at the same time. Laparoscopy is used to rule out etopic pregnancies, ovarian disorders, and pelvic masses. It can also be used to diagnose a cause of infertility. And then we have the hysteroscopy, which views the interior of the uterus and the cervical canal. Here is an image depicting the laparoscopy procedure. And here is an image indicating the technique for a bimanual pelvic examination. All breast masses should be evaluated by a breast biopsy. Most are performed in an ambulatory setting and patient teaching will be dependent on the type of biopsy performed. The different types of breast biopsies are aspiration biopsy, vacuum assisted biopsy, advanced breast biopsy instrument method, and a surgical biopsy. A needle biopsy of the prostate is performed if cancer is suspected. The patient is placed in position for a rectal exam. A local anesthetic is injected. The physician places finger in the rectum to help guide the needle to the prostate. Several aspirations may be done. And a complication that can arise from the needle biopsy of the prostate is sepsis. Okay, let's discuss some reproductive assessment tidbits. Check rubella titers before pregnancy. Mumps or smallpox in men after puberty may cause orchitis. Failure of ovulation is associated with a greater risk for endometrial cancer. Salpingitis is often caused by chlamydial infection and can result in female infertility. Infections or prolonged fever in males may damage sperm production leading to infertility. Don't assume patients are heterosexual. Women who have never had children have higher rates of ovarian, endometrial, and breast cancer than women that have had children. An early age of first intercourse and multiple sex partners are associated with the increased risk of cervical cancer. Always ask about potential abuse and think about how you would actually do this. Okay, let's continue with reproductive assessment tidbits. Remind females not to douche for at least 24 hours before a pelvic exam. Educate regarding vulvar self-examination. Assist older females after pelvic exam to prevent orthostatic hypotension falls. Ask about sexual functioning, erection, or ejaculation and think about how you would word this. 
ask about testicular changes and self-examination. Ask about problems with urination, discharges, and or rectal problems. Phimosis is a type 4 skin that cannot be retracted. Urethral discharge is not normal and should be cultured. If the foreskin was retracted for exam, assured that it is replaced. Hydrocil is a collection of serous fluid in the scrotal sac. And any swollen area of the scrotum should be transilluminated. This concludes the lesson of the assessment of the reproductive system. If you have any questions related to the course content of this lesson, please notify the instructor.